Welcome back in. I'm Jessa Jeremiah and you're watching Talk Wisconsin. As many of you may know, there are two pillars to Catholic education. One is academics and one is faith. And today we're going to focus on the academic side. We're joined by Michael Lancaster. He's the superintendent of Catholic Schools Diocese of Medicine and it is so nice to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, good morning, Jessa. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Well, I'm so excited to touch on this topic because, as I mentioned in my intro, there are really two pillars to what you do. A lot of people, of course, think about the faith side, but that's not all that is a central part of what Catholic schools have to offer. So let's talk a little bit about academics, which, of course, are also something you're known for. Yeah, Catholic schools really are known for um, excellent academics and you know, there are certainly a number of reasons for that. I think um, part of that is because of the faith component and because of how we approach education um, in order to kind of educate the whole child and really pull out all of their talents and gifts that they've been given so that they can realize their, their full potential. Um, that's really what we're trying to do. And so in that process, um, the academic piece is really important that we're really developing their minds to their full potential, that we're uh, giving them a love of learning, um, and not just that they learn, but we really want to kind of light that fire inside of them uh, to continue learning that natural curiosity that we like to spark. Um, and so we do have excellent academic programs uh, in our schools. Uh, they are, you know, the, the reading, the writing, the arithmetic, but also the science and you know, all of those different topics and subjects um, where we really push our students to excel. And I think that is one of the many reasons that somebody might choose to go with a Catholic school for their children is because of the academic ex excellence. I'm curious what you attribute that to. What is the formula, if you will, that makes this possible? Well, I think that, you know, there are a number of things that play into this. Um, first of all, it's high expectations for students um, and having those high expectations, we, we hold everybody in possibility. So um, we really want to develop that potential and our teachers are really committed to that. Uh, so I think, you know, the, the most important person in the classroom is the teacher and we just have incredible, incredible teachers. And certainly this year uh, they have proven that time and time and time again. Um, with what they're doing with, with the students and, and how they're innovating. I also think that there is a high degree of um, parental involvement in our schools. And so the parents are invested and we all know that whenever you can get parents involved in children's education, um, you know, it's better because then it's the school and the home working together towards a common goal. And so when parents support what's being done at school and vice versa, um, then you kind of have this compound effect where it really takes off. So um, I think also just the really strong curriculum that we have. Um, we are, you know, our, our canon law says that, you know, if we're going to educate children, we have to be at least as good as kind of the regular uh, schools that are in the area. And uh, we aim to be uh, head and shoulders above that. So. Um, are, we have a strong curriculum. Uh, we look at, at recent methods and things like that. We're always learning. Our teachers are always learning themselves to find new ways to help reach our students and, and uh, not only reach them, but then challenge them in an appropriate way and kind of, you know, push them when they need push and encourage them uh, all the time. So I think that all of those elements working together uh, really uh, drive the academic excellence in our schools. And you know, that does beg the question when you talk about curriculum and, and really pushing students to that next level, to talk a little bit about the state academic standards. So is that something that you follow or do you have your own set of standards? Yeah, so actually we, we do have our own set of standards. And the reason for that is really because in our schools, we, we weave in the faith into all of our different subjects. So it's not just religion class. It's it's a way of looking at math and science and reading and, and social studies uh, because all of those are, are related back to the faith. So we have our own academic standards, but in designing those and creating those, we consult um, obviously all the state standards because we have to make sure that all of our students meet or exceed those state standards. So 
even though we have different standards, all of the students in our schools are going to meet or exceed those state standards. And then we look at the national standards. So the national social studies, um, English, reading, language arts, um, all of those different subject areas, we look at that set of national standards. Um, and then we look at kind of, uh, you know, how the faith fits into there and uh, we create our own, but we make sure that we are meeting or exceeding um, and that's our goal is always to exceed uh, those state standards. I think that's a wonderful point that you make. You know, we think about faith as being an additional part of the curriculum, but we don't always necessarily think about the lens that it puts on the rest of the curriculum. So it's interesting to hear you talk about how well that is woven into everything that you do. And it's, it's great to see that you have been able to be so successful with your students. I know that there's a high level of parent involvement that plays a role. And of course, it'll be uh, interesting to hear how you navigate the upcoming events and, and to see if more parents find um, comfort in, in private schools and faith-based schools. So we'll have to talk to you more about that in coming interviews. But it sure is nice to talk to you, Michael. Thanks for taking some time with us. Oh, you're very welcome, Jessa. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. We'll be back with more Talk Wisconsin after the break. We hope you'll stick with us.